All right, so far we've been looking at how to load downloaded typefaces from Defont and then refine them in Photoshop. And the ways we've refined them so far is using kerning, where you hold down Option and play with the spacing between. You can even have your letters overlap. I will demonstrate. Holding down Option. I can really squeeze that E in between. Or hold down Option and use my arrow keys to space it out. Of course, you want your text to be readable, but you also want it to be a little bit visually exciting and engaging. So the next way we can refine type is to play with this line spacing in between. And you're probably used to playing with line spacing. I've adjusted the size of the type. I made these capital letters a lot bigger in point sizes than the, than the others. You can also refine the spacing between lines of type like you do when you do a, a research paper for school and it has to be a double spaced or one and a half spaced. That is called leading. L-E-A-D-I-N-G. Leading is this, the space between lines of type. And again, it's easier with all uppercase than it is with lowercase and uppercase. So how do you adjust that? You select it like you would type in a word processor, and then you click on these options here in the top of the Photoshop. And you'll get different windows you can play with. The, t the line spacing one, you have one for kerning as well, but the line spacing one is set to be auto adjusted. And so I'm using a typeface that's pretty big, so it's giving me a lot of line space in between, but I can try something smaller. See how that works. And I can always type in a value. So that works pretty well. Maybe I'll give myself just a little bit more than that. Okay, then you'll also see your font options. So font options are modifications to the typeface that are built into it. So if your typeface has font options, they'll be in this drop down next to it. A lot of the default ones won't have them, but sometimes they will. So this doesn't have any, it just has regular. But Photoshop allows you to add what it's called faux fonts, like fake fonts. So it can do a faux bold where it fakes the bold basically by just giving it a stroke all the way around. And I might like it on some, but I don't like it on that S because it makes it so it doesn't read like an S anymore. So I can add it to some, take it away from others. This is all about customizing. I can also do a faux italics, which is another faux font. And this might work rather well. I can do it with the uppercase, with the lowercase. And I think that has some of the energy that's in my, my blocking text. I can also use this window to adjust the size. So maybe I want the the a little bit smaller than the other things. And I can type in the value. So this is very much like a word processor. But then always remember, you can play with the kerning as well, even the kerning of just the spaces. So maybe I make it smaller, but I keep it bold. So all kinds of things you can play with. Okay, next, the other refining I can do is that I don't need to keep it horizontal in Photoshop. I can select it. Well, it's still editable type. Ah, I gotta get on the type tool, sorry. And you'll have this, right next to the coloring of it, you'll get this arc option. Oh, but it won't work with certain faux fonts. So I'm gonna have to strip it of the faux bold I just added. But this is called a warp text. It's like puppet warp, but it, it will warp a block of text. And so you can set it to be arced, and then you can adjust how much. 
little glitchy right now until I hit OK. You can set it in multiple ways. That can be very helpful. You can have it be straight on the top and curved on the bottom. All of these can really help. You can do the reverse of that. And then they have added some new functions inspired by Illustrator. You can have it in a wave. You can have it in a flag. You can bend these in different ways. So you can really get a good sense of what you want your text to look like by blocking it out in Photoshop. But what is the big problem Photoshop has? It's able to squeeze it as long as you don't have the faux fonts on it. The big problem is you can't output this as a vector, even though the typeface itself is a vector. And that is a problem. So let's say, I'm going to see what, what I liked best. I'll go back in my history. Yeah, that's not terrible. So let's take this kind of crazy thing. I'm going to go ahead and do it again, and I'm going to do a, a regular arch to it. You can't layer them on top of it themselves, but you can modify pretty consistently this way. And then you can still, because it's still editable type, I can still adjust kerning individually if I need to to make sure it's readable. Okay, now I've got type, but it is not a vector. But in Photoshop, it will always, like a smart vector, be whatever resolution is native. So I can take this and I can Command T and I can make it really, really big and high resolution and it will be perfectly clean. But I have not modified the type yet. I've just refined it, even though it can look quite different than what I initially brought in. So I'm going to show you now how to do this within Illustrator. Because this is a good way to mock it up, but what we want is the, the actual type to be a vector. So if I go to Illustrator, I can put it with my illustration here. I can create a new layer within Illustrator and use the type tool, just like I did in Photoshop. Make a box with it, just to get it in. It's going to fill it with, with Roman text. And what I'm going to do is, just like I did in Photoshop, I wish type was more transferable between them. But I'm going to type in, welcome to the nest. And while it's editable, I'm going to use all of the different options at the top. First, I'm going to make it centered. Then I'm going to choose the typeface I want to modify from that I loaded into the font book. The one that supported, what's nice about this new version of Illustrator is it shows you the sample right within the, the typeface selector. So in this case, I actually really like the marker felt option. which actually has some font variations. I can, it can be thin or wide. I think I like the thin. And then I can adjust its point size. And then if I select it and hold down Option and use the arrow keys, I can affect the kerning just like I did in Photoshop. So it's really no different, except that these can be turned into vectors. So I'm going to shrink the kerning a little bit. There isn't an option to faux bold it like there is in Photoshop, but we've seen that that kind of limits what you can do with it anyway. So I'm going to adjust the sizing and the kerning of these. I can make individual letters a little bit bigger. And adjust their kerning using option and the arrow keys. 
And because there's not an italic uh, font option for it, I'm going to have to wait to italicize it. But you see how it's lined up on horizontals right now. Well, what I can do is if you click on your type tool, you have various different type tools. <laughs> more than in Photoshop. And my favorite is what's called the type on a path tool. But before you do that, you have to draw a path. So I'm going to use the free form pen tool, but I could also use my favorite tool, which is the pencil tool. Either way works. But the free form pen tool, because we hadn't used it much, I'm going to turn this off for a minute, lock it, make a new layer. If I know from my blocking text that I want my text to go like, This, this is just a regular pen tool. I thought I clicked freeform, but I hadn't. Then I can undo it. Ah. I'll close the path. Okay. Then I can actually make that path empty by turning off both the fill and stroke attributes. So now I have a path. If I click on the type tool and scroll to type on path and click on the path, it will wrap the text around it, which can be really helpful. So for instance, for this, I might want just the first part of it, which was welcome to. And I can use some of that fun spacing. Ah. Let's try it without a closed path. <laughs> so it doesn't try to keep looping on itself. So I'm going to use under the pen tool is the freeform pen tool. Strange. Okay, I'm just going to use the pencil tool. It's working weird. I just draw the path I want. It can't be too crazy or the type will, and then I use the type on path tool. If you make it too crazy a shape, the type will just overlap itself, right? Now I can just type it in or I can go back to my layers. This is why you mock it up. And I can just Select it with the regular type tool, just like you would from a word processor. And then I can go to my type on path, click the type on path tool, open it up, select it all, and then just paste it in, Command B. And that will give me my sizes and my kerning and allow me to still adjust it in this new shape. Okay, now comes to where we modify the type. Modifying the type is when you actually change the typeface. You make it your own shape that you play with. So this is just getting us started. And the way to do that is you unselect it, but you have it unlocked, and then you right click on the path. And when you right click on the path, even if it's just a straight path that the lines on, that the text is on, you will get this option to outline it. Outlining it is not what I want. <laughs> you want to create outlines from the path. So this is outline view. It's not what I want. Let me get out of this view. Get to regular. Let me see. This has changed a little bit, this new version. Because what we want to do is convert these typefaces to vector shapes. Hmm. I'm going to look that up where they moved that functionality. 
but it's an incredibly important one.